All right, well, let's get started. First off, my name is Carlos, and I'm the accidental chef, and I will be your chef for tonight. Uh, Sheen has probably given you the recipes. We're making um, white chocolate mousse, white chocolate pistachio mousse. We're going to make crawfish fettuccine. We're going to make a wonderful Roma salad with fresh fennel, fresh basil, and capers. And then we're going to make some nice little pieces of good bread. You know everyone loves my good bread. And some crawfish fettuccine. So what I have here in my universal double boiler, I got this in the gadget counter, is um, you want it to sit on a pot where it has a good seal. So you, the steam is what you're using. And you don't want any of it to leak. So you want it to have a good tight seal. Also, that steam scalds you. Scalding is the worst burn in the kitchen and you really don't want that. So I, I've added the butter and the white chocolate and I'm just going to whisk this. It looks like it's just about done. I'm going to add a tablespoon of water to my gelatin. And I'm just going to mix that up real good so that it sets. I'll just a tad more water. Just let that get set up with that. All right. I'm going to add uh, some almond extract. You know, there's no uh, no good recipe without almond extract. I'll put a little extra. I love it. I love it. All right, just gonna mix that together like that. Make sure that, um, I do another recipe that has a lot of butter in it and I find um, for the kind of quickness or whatever, I melt the butter in the microwave and then add it to the chocolates or whatever, your solids that you're melting in your double boiler and it kind of speeds the process up a little. Waiting for that to set. I'm sorry, was there a question? Oh, not long, because it'll boil over. You just kind of, I do it like 30 seconds at a time. My microwave has a melt butter setting. So that'll do it, but I, I do it 20 seconds at a time so that I don't, you know, rather than a full minute, because I've noticed that I have to, you know, take the plate out and clean it up. And when I'm at home, I don't have my steward, so I have to do it myself. Okay, what I want to do over here, this is like kind of my salad board. I want to slice the purple onion and I want to make a little marinade with it so it's not so sharp in the salad. Um, so I'm just going to slice this very, very thin. Okay, I'm just going to open that up in there. Real thin, hair thin. Always when you're cutting, kind of turn your knife to the inside because your natural reflex is to go this way with the knife. So if you turn it slightly towards the onion, it'll keep you pretty much on target. And you won't have, um, you'll have a nice thin slice and you'll keep it, um, keep it on track, okay? Or you can use your muli if you've got one of those handy devices like that. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt to it so they open up nicely. Then I'm gonna add, tonight I'm for the salad, I'm gonna use this nice um, white, white wine vinegar. They, uh, I don't know why they put these things in there, they aggravate me. Um, so I'm gonna add a little vinegar to that. And just to make sure that they're gonna be okay, I'm gonna add a little white sugar to that, okay? You know, that's why we all have diabetes in Sicily. Okay, just kind of toss that nicely like that. Get that all mixed together, okay? And let, let that marinate while the, we come back to the salad after a while, okay? Any questions about that? Yes, ma'am. Well, you could use the Vidalia. I like the red onion because it's going to bring some color to the salad as well. And the, but the Valdea would just do just as nicely. You wouldn't, certainly wouldn't need to sweeten the Valdea onion. Okay, my gelatin is set. So I'm gonna add it to my, um, this is the real key, is getting the right amount of gelatin 
in your mixture so that your mousse stands up but it's not too congealed. Sometimes you get a mousse that's so hard that it could withstand gale force winds. All right, got that mix. You want to be real sure that you you get your um, your uh, mousse. I mean your all of the gelatin dissolved. Otherwise, somebody will get a gum drop in their stuff. Okay, so I put in the freezer my. Um, my bowl and my heavy cream and my um, beater so that um, this is a universal bowl so it goes lots of ways until you get it right. This is a separate bowl I bought from my mixer and it's just for beating. It's great like if your recipe calls to separate the eggs and beat your egg whites separately. It's a handy little device for that. I'm going to start it off slow and let that begin to beat, okay? Now, I've got to make sure i got the right powder. I'm going to put a little bit of, because um, i tell you what, you, putting two cups of powdered sugar in a cake will not make it rise. In fact, it will boil over the pan and run out the oven door. <laughs> so you want to make sure you have the flour and not the powdered sugar. That's an easy test. That's the sugar. So I'm just going to add a little sugar. I make this recipe all the time. The last time I made it, I said I'm going to want to. I want to sweeten it up a little. So I'm going to add some powdered sugar to my. Um, I don't know, maybe a tablespoon. And let that beat real good. So we're going to make them in there. We're going to take a portion of the whipped cream, and we're going to. Um, Mix it with the pistachio flavoring from an instant pistachio pudding. We're going to put a little dollop of that in each one and then we're going to add the um, more whipped cream to this while it cools. I'm letting this cool off and while this, while this beats. It should take about two minutes. Then we're going to top it with these roasted pistachios. So I'm just going to go ahead and chop those up while that finishes. Um, it's business. You notice the cameras? Danny's filming tonight. Probably the back of your head will be on TV, so make sure that you get, he gets a close-up of it so we can give the good credit. What channel? Well, they, these go up first on AOC, our local access channel, and then they go up on YouTube, and there's a link from our website at um, accidentalcookingblog.com. Okay, I wasn't trying to compete with the mixer. There was no way to uh, talk and there's this wonderful fan up there too. I don't know what that's for. Anyway, we've, we've got our mixer, um, our whipped cream nice and whipped. Doesn't have to be too hard, you know. 
You know, if you uh, whip it too long, it turns back into butter or turns into butter, not back. Okay, so there's our little bit of whipped cream. Just a tad more. Then I'm going to add the gelatin mix. Now the not, I put the unflavored gelatin. You know that's where we get jello from. Unflavored gelatin. So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to fold that into there until I get it like completely mixed in. Now I can add more if I wanted more a greener, more green. I think I will. There's little bits of pistachio in there as well. All right. All righty. Now, what are we going to do, Sheena? If I could get your help with this, this would be really great. We're going to take a little bit and just put a little bit in each one of our cups like that. All right. Got it? All right, let me get you a little push spoon. Chocolate mix to my whipped cream. And I'm just going to stir that up. Like that. I don't want to mix it too much because I don't want to lose all my fluff from my whipped cream. All right, got my mixture mixed like that. Then I'm just going to take a scoop full and put it on each one. Yummy. we doing there? We got enough for everybody? Ooh, I'm gonna be tight. I don't know how many more do you need. I got one more. Sixteen. Yeah, one, one more. Great. Perfect. And, and then we're going to take the, sprinkle that on the top of each one. Any questions about the mousse? Kind of easy. Fun to do. All right, and Sheena's just going to stick those in the, um, in the fridge there. All right? All right. Do you think it'll fit? It should. Look at you. Oh, my God, you must have been a cocktail waitress. All right. All right, we've got water boiling here for our pasta. So we're just going to do that. I'm going to turn that off for right now because this is only going to take a minute to do the fettuccine and I want to do it last. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make my good bread. Everybody's favorite. Right? Right. Of course right. So this is what we're going to do. The what? That's right, when you have good bread. Mm. All right. 
Start with a nice bowl. And I'm just going to slice the bread in that. Did everybody have a good Thanksgiving? Anybody learn anything new? I'll tell you the one tip that I did. I started my um, giblet gravy in bacon drippings. There's nothing better than bacon and uh, chicken livers or turkey livers and bacon because that's how you start your mousse. I mean your uh, foie gras. And um, it was just wonderful. And I, um, I had cooked my gizzards in my stock so they were nice and um, cooked so I just minced them right in. But it worked out really good. A wonderful gravy. Also made the sweet potatoes a little different. I found this recipe where I used heavy cream and Grand Marnier and orange zest. Very nice. And pureed the sweet potatoes with that. So that was a fun little new uh, deviation on the pound, as my mother would call it. I used canned sweet potatoes. Is that what you said? No, I just, I just use the can. I'm, I'm not that, uh, I have nothing to prove. <laughs> I just drain them real well and, you, yes, because it's an orange flavor. Heavy cream. What else? What else is there? Shannon, I can't believe you left all this in the bowl. All right. To make our good bread, we start with a little coarse salt some olive oil, a little more olive oil, all right, some cayenne pepper, there we go, it'll be nice and zesty, and we're going to add a little bit of basil, since we have fresh basil, why don't you give me some dry basil, I like that better in there, okay, and I'm just going to stir this up. So the bread's all um, coated. And would you hand me some of that grated Romano that's in the fridge? There we go. Some dry basil. Everybody's favorite. Thank you. You know how I love this cheese. Put that in there. Stir that up real nicely. All right. We use these vented pans. Just set them a single layer like this. Did the thing pass in Washington about the labeling? No. Oh, next time. That was the second time? Third time's a charm. What? Oh, okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use this bowl for the salad since it's got all this good oil and stuff in the bottom. Never waste that. I'm going to take some nice Roma plump for tomatoes and I'm just going to slice them in half. I'm actually going to use this serrated knife. It works better for a tomato because it catches that skin and cuts it.
we brine the turkey using um, allspice and all kinds of other thyme. Just really was delicious. It makes it so tender. Yes. The only thing about I feel about frying turkey, the only tip I have about that is be ready to eat it once you've fried it. Because I don't find it. Well, no, it just doesn't. It's not, once it gets cold, I don't, I don't, I don't know. It's just not the same. It's just, it's just better hot. I don't know. That's just me. Right. Right. Well, you see, the thing about that is you don't know what they do to make that crispy and golden and whatever they, you know, and enhance that for your dining pleasure. Thanks, but I'll pass. All right. So I've got the tomatoes sliced. I cut them in half and then made some uh, semicircles. I'm going to mash some garlic in there. I don't know if that's on the recipe. Does it have garlic? No? Okay. Well, I'm adding garlic. How about that? I'm going to use fresh basil. No. I'm using the dried basil when in the bread. Oh, okay. All right, clean, clean my scraper off there. This is a garlic press, just for the record. Add my onions and the, and the vinegar that was with it. Some fresh capers that I've rinsed. Always rinse your capers because it's real brackish in that, um, in there. All right, this is fresh fennel, and I'm going to go ahead and cut the fronds off, and I'm gonna save them because I'm gonna garnish my salad with it, okay? Cut the heel off. Fennel is a wonderful flavor. Kind of has a, um, a licorice flavor. Sometimes they call it anise. Uh, so there we go. I'm just gonna slice this in half this way, and then very thinly this way. It's probably the most identifiable vegetable that's Sicilian besides the kaguza, which is this long bat-shaped squash, which is wonderful. And um, they have it in the markets here sometimes. I've seen it, I've seen it in the Lafayette store. The fennel kind of has a celery consistency. I'm just... Uh, Chop it again since you guys, it's your first time out. All right. And now the fresh basil. I have it stemmed down in water, which will keep it, keep it fluffy. If you Parsley gets real droopy, cut the ends off and stick it in water and it'll perk right back up. All right? Big broad cuts. All right? Put that in there. Does the, sal does the recipe say anything about Romano cheese? You can just assume if I'm making a salad, I'm adding Romano cheese. All right? What do you think, Shannon? We ready? Looking good. Add a little more vinegar. Some kosher coarse salt. Some crushed red pepper. I'm using the crushed rather than the ground because you, you get a burst of zest from the crushed. Okay? And a little bit of olive oil. 
All right. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to just garnish with these. Somebody will say, oh my God, he put dill in the salad. No, it's not dill. It's the fennel. The only recipe that I know of, my, um, I have a cousin. She makes a fava bean recipe and she uses the fennel fronds in it. And she serves it with the Chianti. All right. Sorry? I'm not sure. Bobby just sautés them dried, just like, I would assume she cooks them like any dried bean. There's that beautiful, as we love it here, bread. Good bread. Oven's off six minutes on a 425 degree convection oven. All right, how about that salad? Hello. Makes all my dreams come true. Not exactly a paring knife. Let me see. You're worried about how much salt I put? I'm just assuming you had coronary disease when you got here. <laughs> so, I'm not the culprit. All right, any questions about the salad? Isn't that beautiful? Beautiful. A little more cheese on the top. All right, you wanna bring some plates? We'll serve up some salad over here with a nice side of good bread. Beautiful, beautiful. When she's doing that, I'm gonna put my fire under my stick of butter. I'm gonna put my fire under my stick of butter. I'm going to put my fire under my stick of butter. The range isn't getting the memo. Got it? Good. All right. And I'm going to add to that a cup of frozen seasoning mix. You know, the one that's the Trinity. It's got everything in it. A little parsley. And on to that, I'm going to add a tablespoon of... Um, Tony Sashery's. Okay. I always add this, my seasoning right now with this because the salt and the seasoning, our regular salt, helps the vegetables um, masticate. Just want your vegetables masticating. All right, I'm going to boil some water here. I don't know what happened to my dish towel, but I really need it. There it is. Thank you. All right. Now in this pot I've got water I got from the tap and I'm boiling it with salt. That's how you know when you have enough Tony Sashries. You, you sneeze or cough or you gotta you just get it gets up in there. All right, how we doing there? Look at you. I'm just gonna saute that real good. All right, any questions about the salad? Something on fire? No, no, no. Good. <laughs> That's a real plus for me. All right, nothing's on fire. All right, done with that. Of course, we're going to use fresh, frozen Louisiana crawfish. Always buy local. And you can always depend on Rouse's to have the local. A match made in heaven. Rouses and local. All right? Not like the bake fresh in Boise we get at those other markets. All right? All fresh. My water's coming up. I've added about a tablespoon of, um, of uh, salt to that. And I'm going to use these broad egg noodles. I use this in my fettuccine because normally I'm serving it in a setting where you're standing and eating. So this makes it much easier to eat than if you've got a long noodle you've got to spend or something. So it works out really well. And I'm just going to um, wait, let that come to a ball another minute or so. It's, it's bubbling real good. 
Oh, make sure I get one of those. Now, um, on the recipe, it says to use a garlic cheese. I don't think they make that product anymore, so I'm going to add some garlic to this, and I'm going to use Velveeta. Okay, you might as well finish that off in there. Yeah, yeah. I'll get you a plate. I'm sorry, what was the question? They did, they did, and the, it was uh, it was an interesting uh, product because it was not, uh, the cheese was gritty, and I'm not sure how that was possible. I haven't seen it. I have not seen it in quite some time. That's why I've adopted my recipe to do this. Now, of course, you could just make a, um, a heavier kind of sauce, but I just add the cheese is a nice touch to it. I've got that just about sauteed. My, my pasta's come to a boil. I'm going to set my timer for seven minutes at the point of dropping, okay? So that, um, that continues to boil nicely. In fact, I'm going to put the lid back on it to encourage it to boil over. All right, any questions? Shanna's doing a great job. Sheena is doing a great job on the salad. Huh? Everybody, I think everybody could get two tonight. It would be exciting. It's exciting stuff. There we go. That's beautiful. Look, this one needs a little more up here. Use all that good stuff up. All right. Now I'm going to add a quarter of a cup of flour to this. The rule with butter to flour is about two tablespoons of butter to a tablespoon of flour. So that's about what we have here. A stick of butter is eight tablespoons. A fourth of a cup is four. All right. Just going to mix that nicely. Kind of a roux, a roux thing happening here. See if I was at home, I'd hit a splash this with a little white wine. Make sure I'd completely deglaze the pan. What do y'all think? Show of hands, white wine? Okay, good. We have consensus. I use vermouth because it always has a screw bottle, screw, screw top. Very dry. Oh, very nice. Just kind of deglaze that. Oh, what a wonderful smell. Wonderful. A little more over here. Didn't get as deglazed as it wanted to be. Oh, we got it. We got boiling. We're boiling here, people. All right, beautiful. Achieve my goals there. All right. Give this a good stir over here. Beautiful. All right. Now to this, I'm going to add a pint of half and half. And I'm just going to work that milk. Lower my fire. That's a misnomer on this burner. There's no real low. But I'm going to lower my fire and begin to work that cream into that flour and butter and everything wonderful. How we doing there, big girl? Good? Got Everybody got one? Somebody want to give her a hand with the pass out? No, no, not a clap. <laughs> Come on, you people. <laughs> Somebody want to help her pass out the, uh, that's it. There we go. Thank you, sir. Uh, okay. Everybody's got a fork and a water. Uh, you can move back right there. You're not in the way. Is she in the way? I didn't think so. He's, he's filming here, dear. He's filming the mirror. All right, so now I'm just going to take, this is about where I want it to be. I'm going to add the um, about five ounces of Velveeta, the magic sauce maker. All right, Velveeta, the magic sauce maker. Beautiful. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Good, good, good. Yummy. You need a fork? Yes, I do. Thank you. You're welcome. And a napkin. All right. Any, any questions about the crawfish? Put the vermouth back. There we go. 
God knows we don't put it in the martini. <laughs> Never heard of what? Yeah, well, this is the uh, modern skip trip easy go. In my fettuccine, when I'm making classic fettuccine, I use garlic, butter, sour cream, and Romano cheese. Full stop. And then toss. And then whatever I'm going to put in there, whatever meat or anything. This is a, um, you know those, uh, that yellow talk about good cookbook? You know, it's full of all those shortcut kind of recipes. And can of soup and oleo and all those old school recipes. Oleo. Oh God, yes. Right. Oh, okay. Right. Exactly. That's exactly right. When you get past five, it's a problem. All right. We're gonna let that keep that stirring there. Now I'm gonna once the cheese is melted. Um, you can really turn your fire off because um, the crawfish is fully How about that salad? Any good? Huh? Is that fabulous? Making your mouth just dance with fun and that uh, happy bread or whatever we call it. It's good, huh? Easy. Fresh. You would call that al fresco. All right. Beautiful. How you like it, darling? Good? I'm just going to um, slice this baby, and hopefully not myself. Go ahead and add all the crawfish and all the juice. All right. All right. I'm going to go ahead and chop my parsley. I'm not too worried about my... Uh, the thickness of my sauce. All right. Chop my parsley up real good. All right, there we go. Stir this up real good. Anybody hear the beeper on the oven? 17 seconds. 17 minutes. All right. Perfect. Want that al dente? Get my crawfish good and mixed in there. Go ahead and kill the fire on that so it doesn't scorch. Isn't that pretty? All right. Just take my pasta right out of here like this. The starches in the pasta that we're not rinsing off are going to make our sauce do very nicely. All right. Add my, um, my parsley here. Very coarsely chopped. That's the way I like it. Okay. All right. Ready? Are you ready? Mm -hmm. A little bit of milk left there. My little bits of bread. I'm just going to combine. Is that fun? That's easy.
you noticed? I had the, it took about the same amount of time to boil the pasta as it did to make the stock. So that this is a great Sunday night dish when you need one pot, you need it in a hurry, you don't want to do a lot of stuff, and it goes right into here. Nice, pretty, aromatic. With the frozen, um, frozen seasoning mix, no chopping. Now, I told you my grandmother was 65 when she started to teach me how to cook, and she said she wasn't peeling garlic anymore. So she just used garlic powder for everything. So, minced garlic. That's a garlic, a minced garlic they call California blend, which is, uh, I'm not sure, I think it's a McCormick. Uh, and it's very nice. It's coarser. It's got some parsley in it, and it, it's a very nice add, especially if you're making scampi or you just like a little garlic on your pasta. You put in I put Velveeta in here rather than the. Uh... Now, we could have made our cream sauce heavier, more flour, more butter, and really made it thick and done almost the same thing, and not had the. Uh, Oh, uh, we could have used another kind of cheese. You know the Mexican, there's this Mexican cheese that you use for queso that would be very lovely in there. That melts, you know that nice, how that nice white queso cheese that you get in a Mexican restaurant. There's a queso cheese that's in the deli over by the finer cheeses in a kind of a round container, plastic, uh, clear plastic container, a round portion. Look at you, you're all ready. Yummy. Okay. I'm ready. Okay. You got other scoop. You a regular scoop. Anybody can step up to serve at any time. I'm telling you, I don't know where they are tonight. That's it. And good food is no accident. Any questions about the fettuccine? Delicious. Recipes easy to read, easy to make, fairly quick. Is that mine? Yes. Oh, look at you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Mm. Oh, I like the wine. Mm. Is she okay? Where'd she go? Oh, okay. Mm. Yummy. Mm. Right. But they said they have a new garage. This is a boy guard. They have a new garage, and it's supposed to be darker and sweeter than the boy guard. But these were wonderful. Whenever I buy a five pound bag, it's just the two of us at home now. I always bake the whole bag at one time. Because they hold up so well, just put them in a Ziploc, take them out. I like to just peel the. Uh, skin off and just eat them like a, an ice cream cone. No. That's usually how it is when you bake them. Yummy.
Well, well, what'd you think about marinating the onion? Wasn't that a nice little touch? It wasn't as sharp. And the fennel, gotta love fennel. And the capers. <clears throat> you need a you need one for a close up, huh, Danny? This would be the magic of TV right here. There we go. All right. Yummy. They're coming along nicely. Then, like I said, they're not going to be 100% tonight congealed because we don't want to wait another 35, 40 minutes for that to happen. Because um, we've got the big game. And um, so, but you'll be able to get the sense of the flavor and the consistency. So, and one thing too that I didn't do that I probably should have done was cool my chocolate mixture by setting it in a bowl of ice and stirring it to cool it down because it needs to be cooler. If I had more time, I'd have just left it seating to the side and cooling on its own while I whipped the, the thing and did that. But for the, <coughs> for time's sake, it'd have been cooler and it congealed faster. So, um, okay, any questions about that? Any comments about the um, crawfish? Awesome. Easy. Was that easy? That's it. That's right. That's exactly right. That's it. Almost 10 minutes. That's exactly right. More like 17. Once you get that water to boil, seven minutes on the pasta. So, all right. Um, remember, if you go to our website, <clears throat> accidentalcooking.com or accidental blog accidentalcookingblog.com it's our candy it's time for us we're starting to make our toffee which is just divine um, you want to get some of that it makes great gifts I'll, I'm gonna make it next time I come for the on the 16th when we do Christmas we'll make some and uh, <clears throat> so that's really good uh, we have all of our, our videos linked up on our website, so you can go there and see them from there. Our order, our, um, we're doing a lot of in-house cooking where I do my, do this kind of demo. I usually do five courses with wine in your home um, for your guests. And it's, it's a whole lot of fun. It takes two and a half, by two and a half, three hours. So it's a, a full evening and a, a full dining. And everyone gets the recipes on recipe cards and um, it's a great activity and everybody has a wonderful time. USA Today described us as convivial. So if you want to have your friends over and be convivial, um, call me. I'll help you with that. Or any party that you have and any event that you have, we can help with that and get that done. So, Shana, I think you should give those sh little custards a whirl and see what happens. I'll finish my pasta. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Oh. Look at her. I know she worked as a waitress. Everybody needs a spoon. Now you are my friend. Yummy. Oh, excuse me. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Two. All right. Everything okay tonight? Wonderful. All right. We got three here. One, two, three. Perfect. 
It's setting up. Okay. The whipped cream and the chocolate set up real nicely. Make sure when you take a bite, you mine down into the green part so you have a little bit of the, the green in every bite. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Rather than the Velveeta, I did mention that I you could use the um, cheese that they use for queso. It's a Mexican cheese. It's a very soft cheese and very meltable. It does very nicely with it. That's the nice thing about Velveeta. It melts nice. You know, if you use the wrong cheddar, it's going to get real stringy in there, and you're not going to get a good. Uh, you're not going to get the creaminess. Even if you cooked it off the side, you just melted that cheese all the way. Sometimes when I make macaroni and cheese and I'm using cheddar and it does that, it's gotten to where when I make macaroni and cheese, I just put the Velveeta with the milk. I'm, I guess I'm lazy, but uh, it uh, makes it happen. It's good? Nice flavor. That's easy too. Just kind of watch your, watch your gelatin. Make sure that you uh, don't put too much because it'll get too hard. Um, so about a, uh, I think there's a tablespoon of gelatin in that packet. So maybe like a two teaspoons for that recipe rather than the um, thing. Did some get down in your stem? I was hoping that wouldn't happen. Did everybody's? Oh, okay. Yes, sir, does compliment the crawfish really well though. With that. Nice compliment. Oh, man, yeah. Great. Awesome. Well, we thank you so much for being here. Remember, we'll be here again on the 16th. Is that right? Monday night. The sixth Monday's a new night for us, but we love it. And I'm um, going to make something wonderful on Christmas. I'm going to, um, at my house, on Christmas Eve, we always have shrimp and okra gumbo. That's our tradition on oh, Christmas no. Eve. Yeah. And then on Christmas Day, we have a, uh, a beef crown roast. So I'll have to just think about uh, which one. I mean, some nice braised Brussels sprouts. All right. No, not Brussels sprouts. You don't like Brussels sprouts? You have that green, nothing green by mouth. <laughs> Thank you. Please come again.